A different future starts with you. That's why GoDaddy does more than help you find a name. You can create, sell, and get found online so any small business can drive change or build an empire. Because old ideas aren't cutting it anymore. This new year, we need a new generation of thinking, your way of thinking. So whatever you have in mind that will help make a different future, find everything you need to get started at GoDaddy.com. Because the future isn't decided yet. It's still ours to win. Start different at GoDaddy.com. So you know something, Mithila? It emerged in the media post Spa that Bernie Ecclestone was actually the hero of Spa and not Lewis Hamilton. Had he not posed with a plastic cow and drank milk straight from the carton, the F1 cars might not have gone racing to a crowd in Spa. Woo! Well done, Bernie Ecclestone. I'm so happy, Kunal. He is saving the sport. Literally. <laughs> like, what would Formula One do without him? Though, but our listeners should know that what actually happened was that a whole lot of local farmers were trying to block the entrance to the race in Spa. Why is that? Uh, because there was some sort of protest, Kunal, over milk prices and whatnot. You know, in a world where fossil fuels rule, and so much so in the world of Formula One, who would have thunk that the good old milk would call the shots? Woohoo! <laughs> But yes, hello everyone. New week, an absolutely new episode coming to you all. And a new Grand Prix this weekend. Formula One moves to the iconic venue, the home of the Tifosi, Monza. But before we proceed, do you think this could be the last Grand Prix at Monza for a long, long time to come? I really hope not. The legend of the Monza cannot be replaced. But it seems that the dollars can be. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I don't know where to start because there's a lot to talk about. There's so much that's happened. There's McLaren, Lotus, Renault. Where do we start? I think we should start with the whole Vettel Pirelli saga that's been brewing. You know, it's absolutely split up the paddock and we've had veterans taking sides. So, let's Hmm, talk about hmm, that. Yes. So, we had David Coulthard, Mika Hakkinen and even Mark Webber side with Sebastian Vettel. Wow, that's a surprise. And we had a bigger surprise in Flavio Briatori, Eddie Jordan, who sided with the tyre manufacturer. You know, very strange that team owners who know less about the tyres than the drivers do, frankly, they only know the cost of the tyres, chose Pirelli's side. But we had Nicky Lauda's side with Pirelli. What about that? You know, that's because Lauda can only side with one driver these years. And that is Lewis Hamilton, (laughs) the perfect F1 bromance. Absolutely. But I must tell you, you keep saying bromance, bromance. But you know, this whole arrangement seems very one-sided to me. I mean, we never hear Hamilton saying anything about Lauda. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Very unfair, I say. (laughs) Lauda also said that Lewis Hamilton is unbeatable this year. Well, 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 I would first say that his Mercedes car is unbeatable. And then it would be right to say that Lewis Hamilton is unbeatable too, in the team and outside. But you know, if I had to find one single flaw in Hamilton's absolutely perfect race weekends this year, you know, it has to be the number of times he fixes his hair on the podium. (laughs) Have you seen him at it? I mean, I'm sure he hates the moment or two when, you know, the national anthems are being played and he has to take off his cap and expose his hair to the world. (laughs) It seems like bad hair days are an occupational hazard for our world championship. (laughs) And despite winning the pole position trophy, Hamilton might not actually win a trophy this year for it. Poor guy. So, Nico Rosberg claims that he is yet to receive his trophy from last year. Hmm, Interesting areas that the FIA is cutting costs in. But yes, seriously speaking, if Nico Rosberg actually has to mount a challenge to Lewis Hamilton and his supremacy, he will have to do it on Saturday. I think that's the only way to win races in the Mercedes camp. Given Hamilton's dominance on the Friday and the Saturday and the Sunday and in fact even during the August shutdown and Rihanna okay absolutely I am actually (laughs) bored of his on-track performance and probably am more interested in knowing who the new girl in his life is and here too Nico Rosberg can't be left 
too far behind can he <laughs> so he's got a new girl in his life too yes indeed this weekend more than any other is special he's got a ers boost an mg uk and an h boost <laughs> in his life in the form of his daughter congratulations congratulations nico rosberg talking of women so it seems like the woman closest to getting an f1 seat will actually be quitting towards the end of 2015 suzy wolf time to say goodbye kunal i guess so you know she's waited a few years already she was being very ambitious in wanting a racing seat and with she not being favored she probably wants to look elsewhere and if i was her i'd probably go to another racing series on my credentials as a racer because they are somewhat in question and try and make a comeback i'm being ambitious again but you know what's really surprising kunal given that everyone mm. on and off the grid is in talks with haas racing including you as it <laughs> may seem <laughs> I'm really surprised that Suzy Wolf is not on that list. Then maybe you should go represent her to Haas Racing as well. Why not? Absolutely. A new career move for <laughs> Miss Mithila Mehta. Why not? And meanwhile, Danica Patrick lacks the desire to be in Formula 1, much like Carmen Jorda probably lacks the speed. But on that note, her team Lotus So they're expecting Monza to be another blockbuster weekend for them right on the heels of Spa. Yes, it could be so. The car drives well in low downforce configuration and they have a Mercedes engine and you know personally I'm very excited to see Force India resume their battle with Lotus. A single point separates them for fifth wow, in the world too championship. Too close for comfort. And the battle it's on track as well as off it. So reportedly Renault has been in talks with both teams for ownership. I hope Renault are able to finally make up their mind and confirm their intentions sooner rather than later. And you know their impact will be on engine as well as driver related contracts. So the earlier the better. Although I'm a big fan of suspense in the sport. <laughs> of course you are. But the suspense, the suspense started post Spa itself when Lotus's cars weren't actually allowed to leave the circuit till 4 days after the race. I mean they were really lucky that the next race is only Italy. If it had actually been a fly away race, they would have been in big big trouble. And and you know what Mithila, a little known fact is that Charles Peak is one of the creditors for the Lotus F1 team. You know if the team is unable to pay, they should just do what a lot of companies do, you know, pay Charles Peak in kind. Give him a few FP1 sessions and maybe you know a Grand Prix if they're feeling really generous. <laughs> That could work well. But you know with all of this it seems that Lotus is a really messy team to buy. In sharp contrast, Arriva Ben claims that this is the Ferrari team that he wanted to put together. Yes, it seems like, but a team that could have done far better had it been powered by a Mercedes engine, I'm sure. <laughs> but thankfully, they also say that the driver academy isn't shutting down. Good news. Yes, best news for the sport. and the drivers we really need such academies to fund driver progress through junior formula i have written about it and i'm going to back link it so try and read the piece read on, when you read can on. ferrari fans will be really happy to know ferrari are bringing an engine upgrade to monza so all eyes on them but the italian gp which is the home of ferrari will be a mercedes spec grand prix in my view because the works team and their customers are where my money is going to be bet on But my most favorite question for every Grand Prix: What about McLaren Honda? What can we expect? You know, as funny as it may sound, and it'll always sound, Honda has now lowered their engine comparison claims drastically. <laughs> They now claim that they're just twenty-five bhp more than Renault, <laughs> and this is only after they just compared themselves to Ferrari. Just a fortnight ago, huh? Yes, you know the joke is on McLaren. We said this a few weeks ago. In fact, we did a full episode on this yes, a few weeks we ago. Yes, we did. All talk, no power, or as somebody put it, the power of farts instead of the power of dreams for Honda. <laughs> Below the belt. <laughs> Literally, another piece of talk from McLaren. So Fernando Alonso has claimed that next year will be completely different from this year. Well, I hope so for their sake. But hey. Next year is just about eight races away, and you know this is also the first time when Honda has spoken against McLaren and the flaws in their chassis. They claim that the chassis lacks aero and mechanical grip. Well, I really hope that this relationship does not deteriorate the way Renault and Red Bull Racing's relationship there. I hope not too, and you know maybe this is just 
why it shows that drivers wanted to be in teams where chassis and engines were manufactured by the same constructor. Before we move on to Monza Kunal, here's a bit of news that I am so excited about. So we hear that Patrick Dempsey plans to start an F1-based TV show. And the storyline will actually be based on the 1961 World Championship. Yes. Dempsey is an old hand at motor racing. He's raced for Porsche this year and he's trying to get fitter and faster, which is a great news. But the better news, like you said, is about his TV series. And if I am correct in my assumption, Rush probably had more viewership and global interest than the 2013 Formula One season put together. Not surprised. But you know, Kunal, if the show actually does well, I wouldn't be too surprised if we start seeing Bernie Ecclestone himself, you know, producing and directing and distributing other such (laughs) TV shows. And you know what? I actually won't be surprised to see Lewis Hamilton actually star in some of these, (laughs) given how bored he is of Formula One, you know. Yes, and talking of Patrick Dempsey, it'll be a good way to actually market F1 in the USA, you know, a market which is traditionally not been a stronghold for Formula 1. The 1976 championship was all about Lauda versus Hill and 1961 was actually about the only American-born driver, Phil Hill, to win. And interestingly, it was also Ferrari's first ever manufacturer's championship as it was called back then. This sounds really, really exciting. Finally, over to Monza. You know, we've been talking for almost 15 minutes on this podcast, Kunal, and Finally, we've gotten to the main subject. Woohoo! You talk too much. <laughs> well, you know what? I'd rather say that you'll be glad we have so much to talk and make fun about. Thank you, F1. Anyway, who do you think will win in Monza? Good old question. Hamilton or Rosberg? Bad command or file name. What does that mean? It means that till the end of the season, this question should cease to exist. <laughs> okay, fine. Who do you think will come third? You know, the best of the rest. I think a Ferrari might have a chance given it's a Tifosi power, but I think it'll be yet another Mercedes-powered car. I really wish it's a Force India. Of course you do. But you know, there's really no point guessing where McLaren Honda will finish. You know, I think we should now start guessing what their next excuse could be. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on from McLaren Honda, I'm excited to see what Max Verstappen will do yet again. He's been out there entertaining us on almost every possible occasion. And, you know, this is possibly his best chance to win the hearts of the Tifosi before he gets his Ferrari drive. Absolutely. Now, that'll be something. And, you know, I can totally imagine when he arrives at Ferrari, he might actually have more fans backing him than Sebastian Vettel. Well, 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 well. Guard what you say because you're talking of (laughs) the baby Schumacher. But on that note, Turkey lost a Grand Prix a few years ago and we were all very upset about that. Turn 8. Bring back Turn 8. But now the news just gets worse because the circuit has been made into a large second-hand car dealership. Can you believe that? Oops. Oops. I really, really feel horrible to think what would happen to Monza if they don't renew, you know? I hope not this. Well, I really hope not this as well. Turkey holds a special place in my heart, you know. It was my first ever Grand Prix in Formula 1. Wow, that must be a very yeah, special memory. But I see memory. a positive in this. I could land up at the Istanbul Park as a potential car customer and end up driving one of the older cars actually on the circuit. I could very much do turn 8, even though if it's flat out only at 80 kilometers that per hour. That is a damn good idea, Kunal Shah. <laughs> But on a very somber note, we'd like to pay our respects to Justin Wilson and his family. You know, just as we prepare for yet another Grand Prix, the reality of the sport has hit us yet again. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. But Kunal, closed or protected cockpits, can we really expect them in the future? Yes, you know, it is unfortunate, the passing away of Justin Wilson, but there is a lesson he's taught us in his death too, which is to donate. He's donated as much of his body as possible and I believe that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Please donate. Yes. And talking about cockpits, you know, the FIA is best suited to run tests and make a decision. You know, the management of the sport may be silly about running the sport as a business, but they're not silly about running this sport as a sport. Thank God. At this moment, it does seem like we need added protection around the cockpit area to increase safety. 
And while I don't really have an answer, I would have only have one appeal though, that the fans should accept these changes, even if the visual aspect of the sport changes drastically. Because in Formula 1, it's always safety first. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus. The bulbous walrus. The name your price tool. Only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.